almost every game uses some kind of inventory system. So that is why I created this package to help out with creating inventory system for your game using visual scripting. So if we go to the smart penguins dot s plus the inventory system folder in here, there is the inventory system graphs which has snippets of actions that you might want to take when using inventory system in your game. So you start with creating a new inventory. You can specify the size of the inventory, which is how much stacks can you have in that inventory. And after the inventory is created, you get the inventory ID. That inventory ID is going to be how you can get access to that inventory data that is saved. So that ID is what you want to store in your game and attach it to whatever the inventory object or if this is inventory for the player to the player that you want it to be attached to. Now, once you have created that inventory, you can use the save inventory node to save the specific inventory ID or you can use the save all option to save all of the inventories of the game. So for this one, you might want to use some timer or have an option for the player to be able to save whenever they want. And that will save all the inventory data to player prefab or a JSON file. That's the two options I have right now in the settings. I'll show the settings a little bit later. But if you're interested in some other option of saving, make sure you write that in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Then to get the inventory, all you need to do is pass that ID, the inventory ID that you're trying to get to the get inventory node, and that will return you the inventory object. This is the top level type. This is where all the data is started with. In this inventory type, you have the list of stacks and you have some things like created time, when it was created, max size, fixed size. I'll talk about those options in other videos, but there are some other features that are available here. Then you can use the delete inventory if you want to delete a specific inventory that you no longer need. If you're destroying a chest in your game that has an inventory attached to it, you would delete the inventory information as well. Now moving into stacks, you can get all the stacks for a specific inventory. Then you can run a for each loop to iterate through that stack list and you can do whatever you want with those item stacks. Currently, the information that is stored in the item stack is the item and also the quantity. So not that much information in this type right now, but I've decided to create a separate type so it'd be easier to expand upon and add new features to the item stack. The UI icon and max stack size are actually pulled from item types and the item type key is pulled from the item. So that information is inside the item and is not attached to the item stack itself. And then if you want to transfer some stacks between two inventories, there is the transfer option. So you can specify the from inventory ID and to inventory ID, and then you can specify the position of the stack from and to a specific stack position. You can also use the transfer stack to merge multiple stacks in the same inventory. You just provide the same inventory ID for that. Now, if you want to listen for a change in the inventory, there is an inventory event node that you can listen for. If you pass the inventory ID as the filter, it's going to trigger events only for that inventory ID. But if you leave it empty, it's going to trigger each time there's an inventory change, no matter what the ID is. And you can get the inventory ID from the output and make your decision of what you want to do on that side. Also provided an option if you want to manually trigger event so that you can have control over when the inventory gets updated. These events are very useful for refreshing your inventory UI, but there are more applications that you can use it for. Now moving into the items, you can add items by specifying the inventory ID where you want to add it and then specifying the item type key. So for instance, I want to add coin, I can use the coin key. 
and pass the quantity I want to add. The add item returns the quantity that was added. This is in case if your inventory is full and some items weren't added, you can determine that if the quantity added is lower than the quantity that you were trying to add. Now I'm going to show how you set up the item type keys and the list of item types for your game in a little bit. But let's finish going through these graphs. So you can also count the items in the inventory. Uh, it's going to go through all the stacks and count how much total coins you have in the inventory. And the remove item is almost the same as the add item, except you're removing. And it, there you get two possible results. If it was successfully removed, it's going to give you removed. If you don't have enough quantity of that specific item inventory that you're trying to remove, that's when it's going to fail. Now for the get item type, if you want to get information about the specific item, you can get item type, pass the key for that item type. Then you can get all this data that is stored in the item type. So the item type has the key, which is how all of the item types are referred to. And then you can specify a category, the name, the UI icon, prefab, max stack size. Now the data that is available here, you can change it for your specific game and make more information available to be populated here. I just left the basic ones which you would probably use. Then you can also get the full item type list that is available in your game by using this node and just iterate through that list and populate that if you want to somehow display all of those items in your game. The hierarchy of how the types are working, I have a example right here. So you get the inventory that gives you that custom type that I've created called inventory. Then in the inventory, you have the item stacks and I already said that the item stack just stores the item object and the quantity. The rest of the information is pulled from inside of the item. So the item type key is pulled from the item itself and UI icon and max size is pulled from the item type and UI icon. So that whenever you are actually displaying item stack in UI, this is the basic information that you would use to display it. Now for the item, I'm storing the item type key and a dictionary of item stats. This is the place where you can customize something specifically for that item. So if you are crafting some sword and you want some specific stats for that specific sword, this is where you can store that information. Otherwise, if your items are very standard and they're not really generated randomly, you would use the item type to store that information. If you need more type of information to store, you can add that in the class. So let's go look at this item type and how you can create it for your game. Right here, next to all these graphs, you can find the inventory system settings and currently for the settings, you can specify the item type scriptable object. So that's the list of item types for your game. Then you can specify the save type. So there's option for saving the data in the player prefs, or you can use the JSON file. If you're using the JSON file, you can specify the location where that data is being stored. So currently it's stored at assets data. So those are the settings. And again, you can find it at the root of the package folder. Now, if you want to change the type of information you can store in item type, you can go to the runtime types. And right here, there's the item type. And in here, you can expand this class with more variables that you want to store. So the way you would do that is, for instance, let's say that we want to store the weight of all our items. You can do public, uh, let's say we're going to store it as a type float. And then for the variable name, we're just going to use weight. And like that, you just added another field that you can store for any item type. So I'm going to actually remove that. And to create item types, you can go in under create. There's the S plus IS item type, and you can create a new item type list like that. And it's a list of item types and you can just add 
new items here. And in here, you can populate it with your information. So if you want to add coin as one of the items, you can just for name, let's say coin, and you can fill out the information that you're actually going to use in your games. If you're not going to be using category in your game or name, you can just leave them empty. It's up to you. And then for icons, you can specify the icon you want to use there and prefabs and the stack size as well. So that's how you would add an item type. If you need another one, you can add one here. And so that's how you populate them. You can have multiple lists created for your game. But to use that list in your game, you need to make sure that in the settings, you choose the list that you want to use for your game. So I'm going to remove this list because the list that is currently and being used is located right here. So this is the list of items that is currently being used in the demo. And I do have two demos, 3D example demo and an example. Let's run this one for now. So this is an example of how you would run some things in the game. So for instance, if I want to open chest one, here's my chest one. I can move things from the player inventory into the chest inventory. And then I can open a chest to and store something there as well. I can save this inventory so that the next time I run the game, this information can be saved. And then also, if you want to add items into the inventory, you can add logic for adding items. So you can see that I have added more corn to the inventory. So let's save that. And if you want to see any of those actions that I was just taken, they are in the canvas under tests. That's the list of buttons. So chest one, chest two, and you can check out the script that I have for here. Um, so for the chest, the logic that I have here is I check if the chest ID is created for this uh, game. If it is, then I just open the inventory. And if it's not created, then it creates a new inventory and then it opens the UI. The save is very simple, just save all. And the add item is pretty simple as well. Just specify the inventory ID that I'm adding it to. The inventory ID is the player inventory. And then I specify the item type that I want to add and the quantity. And that's pretty much it for the adding items. The second example is this 3D example. This more like a survival, I guess, style of a game. So you can mine for some stone right here, for instance, or you can go chop some wood with a pickaxe. And then there's a chest here that you can open and transfer the items from one inventory to another. The inventory data that is used here is exactly the same as is used for the other example. So that's why you can see all the changes that we just did there. And then here we have an option to actually add some coins simulate a coin collection. And then if you want to purchase something like these rubies, we can do that as well. And the changes will only save if you actually click save. To exit out of the inventory and back into the game, you can hit tab and that's going to turn off the inventory and you can continue rounding around this small scene. So this is what available in this package. Now the package is in early access. So that's why the price right now is lower than it's going to be when it's going to be fully complete. So if you're interested in this package, you are welcome to get the early access and give me feedback about what do you think about this inventory and what changes I should implement or features that I should add to this inventory. I hope I didn't miss any important part about this package. But if there is any questions, be sure to ask that in the comments and I will provide more information.